I'm sorry. I am not going to mince words on this one. I think Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is evil. I think she is an evil person. And I think I'm just tired of giving the benefit of the doubt. That is to say, I don't like neocons either, but I'm not going to pretend that there is an easy path to peace. So I can sit here and whinge all day on the internet about what's happening in Israel with the war in Gaza. And there is no good answer I can give you. I can only tell you that there are evil people celebrating death in the Democratic Socialists of America, an organization for which Ocasio-Cortez is a member of. Now you've got squad members accused of glorifying what happened. And so I look at uh, uh, this statement from a Democrat to show you that we are dealing with what I can only describe as an impossible situation. And it's, this is why I tend to be anti-intervention. The United States is not under attack. We have not been killed. American citizens have been killed in Israel. It is horrifying. And there should be some answers for this. But if you as an American choose to go to, a, to an area in conflict, and lose your life. It, it, I do not believe that is the fault of every other American or should draw us into war. I'm not going to pretend to have the greatest answers in the world for what's happening right now because it is horrifying what we are seeing in Israel. But you all do need to understand that there are many atrocities happening all over the world, and we cannot answer for all of them. What I can tell you is we can absolutely condemn horrifying and evil actions that are coming out of Hamas, that we see, take, take, they utilize Gaza, they use civilian areas. These people are evil. There's a viral video that's got me real fired up, Julio Rosas, showing in Times Square at an event promoted by the DSA, a woman saying that they have launched an incursion into Israel, that they are firing missiles, and they're all cheering and clapping as the rest of us watch the world descend into chaos. And you know what I can say? Now, a lot of people are going to come out and they're going to be like, yeah, but Israel is an occupying force. And others are going to say Israel has a right to exist. And it's Hamas that attacked civilians. It's war. It's war, baby. There's no celebrating any of it. Look, I, I look at what's going on in Ukraine and I say it is bad that Russia is, is, is invading. But that doesn't absolve the West of its responsibilities or its culpability either. That's why I'm kind of like, man, my positions tend to be the U.S. secures its own borders, protects its interests display strength through trade and manufacturing and economic power. And of course, we have allies overseas. But the idea that we are the world police makes literally no sense. Are we going to now rush into the Strait of Taiwan to defend Taiwan from China? How can we maintain that conflict? And it's all bubbling up. We can't even maintain a presence in Ukraine. They refuse to declare formal war, but we know what's going on. And now all the money we dump into Israel. I'm sorry. Look, it's a rock and a hard place. If the U.S. pulls out its support for Israel immediately right now, Israel gets crushed. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of what we're doing overseas in the first place. Take a look at Afghanistan. My position is we should not have been there in the first place. But the way Joe Biden pulled out may have just made everything worse. The reality is such the circumstances for the conflict around the world exist. We must adapt to it to figure out how to de-escalate, secure these areas, and remove our involvement over a long period of time. And then, of course, you'll get the establishment neocon neolib of, you know, American exceptionalism of, of spreading democracy. And they're going to say, if we leave, there's a power vacuum. Look, man, perhaps, perhaps there is no good or easy answer. But I'm going to show you this video that boils my blood. Here's a video. Andy No retweeting a video by Julio Rosas. At the Hamas celebration rally in Times Square organized by the far left socialists and Palestinian nationalists, a speaker talks about the Islamist attacks that occurred that uh, I'm sorry, the attacks that have killed hundreds of Israelis, mostly civilians. The crowd cheers. I think it is absolutely fair to play this video. Despite the fact that I do not want war between Israel and Palestine, it's a conflict that has existed long before I've been alive and for which I have very few good answers on. I'm not going to pretend to be a moral authority here. What I can tell you is this is disgusting. This is disgusting. Think about it strategically. What was gained by Hamas launching these attacks on Israel, kidnapping, killing civilians? There's, I'm going to play the video for you. Let's play the video. 
seven, our resistance stormed illegal settlements and paraglided across colonial borders. <laughs> Reaching Tel Aviv, reaching Tel Aviv, they are celebrating and cheering for rockets being fired on civilians. I hate all of this. I'm sick of the American foreign policy. Donald Trump gets no consideration from me when he fired rockets into Syria. I'm sick of it. You know why I can appreciate Donald Trump's presidency? No new wars, a timeline for Afghanistan withdrawal, negotiating with the Taliban. I don't like the Taliban. I don't like North Korea. I like peace. And that means we do not exacerbate the problems. These people are abject evil. This is an event promoted by the Democratic Socialists of America, for which AOC is a card carrying member. These people are abject evil. There's no question. When you come out and say 5,000 rockets were fired reaching Tel Aviv, you are not celebrating conquering the military of your enemies. Or, or trying to stabilize anything. The only thing that was accomplished by these attacks was to further destabilize and cause a crisis for civilians. Innocent civilians who were killed, innocent civilians who were captured, Israeli citizens, and now the retaliation is going to be massive collateral damage on the citizens and civilians in Gaza. And I'm seeing these leftists come out and they're saying, now they're going to, to harm these poor children in Gaza. Dude, it's war. The, the attack was launched by Hamas and there and you've got people coming out saying, yeah, but how did Western intelligence miss this? I don't know. The Biden administration is completely incompetent. That's one answer. I do not care for us to be involved in all of these conflicts, but I can at least tell you this. A sign being held up by one of these activists says Def no more funding for Israel. They're not coming to you in good faith and saying we shouldn't be providing funding for Israel because of foreign policy issues. I will tell you in good faith, my concern with U.S. funding foreign nations is that we are extracting from the American people for what? The petrodollar. Justify it. Our borders are open. Our manufacturing base is weakened. Uh, the interest rates are skyrocketing. We ain't doing so well. Let's make our country great. I don't see why I should have to worry about the border, a border dispute in Ukraine. I don't see why we decided to get ourselves involved in Israel going back 70 years. That is not to say I don't recognize the conflict we are in today. There is no easy answer. Fine. But when someone comes to me and says, on my libertarian principles, we shouldn't be providing funding to these countries, I'll say, you know, I, I, I agree. And then they cheer when their side blows up kids and kidnaps civilians. I'm going to refrain from swearing. But these people calling for def the, the, the defunding of aid to Israel are not doing so on a principled ground about supporting America. They hate America. They hate this country. And what they want is to strip Israel of its defenses so they can massacre more civilians because you've heard what they said. They're illegal settlers. They're colonizers. Look, I cannot in my life, for one, completely grasp the entire history of the region. Nor can I provide you with sound solutions to a problem that has existed long before I came into existence. I can tell you that what I want more than anything is no fighting, peace. And there can be peace. There can be. But this attack was launched by these extremists who celebrate the bombing of civilians. I'm sorry, evil exists. I've been to Israel. I have concerns. Absolutely about the U.S. providing funding, about the formation, all of these things, about the settlements in the West Bank. I want justice. I want peace. But I can tell you this. When you are dealing with people who celebrate the bombing of civilians as a military victory, understand what this conflict is. I am not advocating for providing funding to Israel. None, n n absolutely not. I don't want I, I, I am overwhelmingly anti-intervention. I think the U.S. has involved itself in so much. Now, I'm not so naive. I'm not. 
I understand China would gladly seize and conquer whatever they could if they had the chance, which puts us between a rock and a hard place. I don't have all the answers. I can tell you there's no way the U.S. can sustain itself in a conflict over Taiwan. China, mainland China is right there. They have unlimited supplies. I'm saying that figuratively. Their base of operations is within miles, a couple dozen miles of Taiwan. U.S. bases are Australia. Yeah, it's far away. We have Japan, we have South Korea, but we will not be able to maintain a conflict over Taiwan. China is literally right there. So what do we do? For one, guarantee security to our allies to the best that we can, but they got to pay. I have no problem with alliances. I just don't think we can involve ourselves in wars. And there's a conflict and a dispute over Taiwan, which puts us again between a rock and a hard place. My friends, this is why I will not run for office. It is why I am no president, no leader, no member of Congress. I don't have the answers. Look at this. Here's another video. Let me play this video for you. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. What does from the river to the sea mean? It means the, the entirety of Israel. It means this whole landmass will be conquered. These people do not seek peace. They, 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 they call Israel colonizers. And, and by all means, you can say, Tim, the formation of this nation of, of Israel and blah, blah, blah. Don't know. Don't care. I wasn't alive for it. Can't answer for it. Had nothing to do with it. All I want is for the fighting to stop. I don't think there will be a solution. Not an easy one. So what do we do? I can't tell you. I'm sorry. I, I literally just don't know. What I can tell you is there is one group of people that is saying Iron Dome defense system. They're saying Israel should be allowed to exist. But there are questions I have over the West Bank. Why the, the, the stories that we hear and the, and the dissolution of what was once considered to be Palestine, it's now falling apart. And videos of settlers coming in and just taking properties. It's conflict. It's colonization. Call it whatever you want. It does not justify the massacring of civilians. I don't have the answers and nor can I pretend to be knowledgeable. But I can tell you, you're going to get hyper partisans on all sides. What I can also tell you is I find AOC to be abject evil. And I say that because uh, I, I show you right here. She is a card carrying member of the Democratic Socialists of America. Unquestionably. And the DSA was in solidarity with the Palestinian people and their right to resist 75 years of occupation and apartheid. Why kill civilians? You see, I mentioned this in my earlier morning segment about the conflict. The left views each and every Israeli friend of them tourist or otherwise, as a an occupier of stolen land. They view the same thing of the United States. They hate this country. A young German woman. She was uh, at a music festival. She's dead. They paraded her body around. I do not believe these videos are faked. There's possibility it's fog of war and it's propaganda. Fine. But people have matched a tattoo on the leg of a woman uh, to a German tourist who was visiting uh, this place. A conscientious objector, I believe she was a dual citizen, but a German national, didn't want to fight, was a peace activist and a pacifist. And this, and this brings me to um, war. I want to stress, I, 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 I call on Ocasio-Cortez to condemn the Democratic Socialists of America and call out their celebration. I'll put it this way, I'll, I'll keep it light. They promoted an event that celebrated the ma mass killing of civilians and the bombing of civilian centers. Barack Obama killed an American citizen bombing a civilian restaurant in a country we are not at war with, Yemen. I want answers. Donald Trump ordered a commando raid in Yemen. It resulted allegedly in the death of an eight-year-old girl. I try to be reasonable and very careful. We know for a fact the Obama administration admitted to the death of Abdurrahman al alaki and the extrajudicial assassination of American citizen Anwar al alaki Not a good guy, by my understanding. Still, an American citizen who, who has rights. All humans do. I can understand wide leeway in war, whatever you want to call it. But the killing of a 16-year-old American citizen at a civilian cafe in a country we are not at war with. Now, when it comes to Donald Trump's commando raid, these are allegations not yet confirmed but believed to be likely. OK, what can I say? If it is true, Obama did this, lock him up. If it is true, Donald Trump did this, lock him up. But in the meantime, both, while I do believe the Obama one is more of a settled matter, investigate both. I don't care. The, the idea that we just drop bombs on civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. But this is war. You'll find that people are evil. 
I don't know, man. I, I don't know if sometimes I, I truly wonder about goodness, but I feel like if the argument right now is that Israel is trying to maintain peace and Palestine is celebrating the killing of civilians, then I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. Stable Israel, a stable Israel, because I've been there. They're not perfect people. No country is. But when you come out celebrating the bombing of civilians, I'm sorry, I'm not going to I'm not going to support you. And even if you don't believe it, they'll come out and they'll say, yeah, but Israel's lying. What they're really doing is this, that or otherwise. Yeah, well, they're doing a better job of propagandizing than are you. That's all I can say, if that's your argument, because right now I can tell you what I see. Israel, with all its faults and all its problems, maintaining peace to the best of its abilities and Hamas paragliding in and killing civilians and they celebrate it. You want to know what? Many people are going to argue it's propaganda. They're fake videos. Fine. Go ahead and do so. They're still celebrating it. That's why I despise these people. They're celebrating it. I don't. You can say the videos aren't real. You can say this woman never died. You can believe whatever conspiracy you want. You can say Israel allowed it to happen, whatever. They're celebrating it. In Times Square, in our country, there are people cheering leftists saying no more funding for Israel, and they are celebrating the bombing of civilian targets. Julian Assange exposed something he called collateral murder when the U.S. killed journalists. Good. Expose the crimes. I know the world is not so simple. and It's not so easy and, and war happens. Let's talk about those who are who are too naive to realize this. While I condemn the killing of civilians and I have concerns about what Israel does, same as, as anyone else, I, I think it's clear to see that one side is an ideological extremist faction celebrating the killing of civilians. And Israel is often under the microscope and attacked for the killing of civilians when it comes to this conflict. To be a pacifist and to ignore the realities of war. I think it's a harsh reality we, we can't ignore, but there are answers other than invasion. But again, I, I recognize fully that my information, my understanding of this is cursory. And so my frustrations may just be screaming into the wind. This young woman, Shani Luke. She was a peace campaigner and conscientious objector, and now she's dead. There are reports that there was a gun ban that resulted in people being unable, unable to defend themselves. So what do you do? Do we stay strong, defend our borders and say, if you attack us, we defend ourselves? Do we say, if you attack our allies, we defend ourselves? It's a tough question. If the people in Israel were able to keep in bare arms at this festival, many of them would be alive today. But I do believe the issue can scale. And so I think about what it means for Israel and how they should respond. Does Israel have the right to keep in bare arms, to defend itself and its borders? You betcha. Should the U.S. provide money for nothing and the guns for free? Tell me what we're getting out of it. Now, I know Israel has massive defense contractors and manufacturers. They make a bunch of components for weapons. And there's a benefit for us in this capacity, but it's more of a deal with the devil, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is we are we are we are the devil. I'm saying the United States war machine is take that out of context. Love just to have fun. I'm saying that we are the ones who offer these bargains where it's like, sure, we'll give you all the weapons. We'll give you all the weapons and then you will fight how we see fit. When we want, we will call upon our bargain. It's the IMF. It's the West. It's NATO. It's the economic powers of the world. What would happen? If the U.S. were to pull funding from strategic areas, man, I don't know. I think the scary reality is, and this is why I always am like 90 percent anti-intervention. The U.S. intelligence agencies and military need to justify. They do. Period. End of story. You don't get to just say we're doing it and make up some BS reason and lie about it. But I have to under, you know, I, I, I do understand when one side celebrates the mass killing of civilians and the other side is at least trying to maintain a facade. There is a there is a good and there is an evil. Call it what you want. And so I wonder sometimes about small scale to large scale. Would it make sense for you to provide funding for weapons for your friend in a neighboring in a, in a community 70 miles away? And you're like, well, they got a lot of crime, so I'm going to keep sending them guns. I'm like, I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe they should take care of their neighborhood. Why are you intervening in the neighborhood? Right. You see what I mean? We're not there. We got to take care of our neighborhood. The argument then becomes because the neighborhood in our city nearby and the negative impacts affect the rest of us. OK, well, then the whole world's our responsibility. I look at it this way. All of the funding that we're engaged in is basically just world domination. And I suppose 
you have the argument that you dominate the world through force and not through trade and charisma and, and culture and all that stuff. Maybe I'm just naive, man. Maybe I'm just naive, but I don't have the answers. All I can tell you is right now, with all this going on, I hope for a quick resolution. I hope more civilians don't die. You've got the squad. They're calling for a ceasefire. You know, that's a tough question, isn't it? Should there be a ceasefire? What does that mean? It means that Hamas can level uh, this attack on civilians, fire 5,000 rockets at civilian targets. And then Israel is just supposed to say, please, no more fighting. How would you feel if across the street from you, someone was opening fire on your house? Destroying everything. They vowed to do it again. But the police show up and they say, stop, stop, stop. Let's have a ceasefire right now. One side keeps shooting, but the cops are saying, no, no, ceasefire. You'd be like, what? Are you kidding me? They're attacking me. I don't have the answers to this stuff, man. I can just tell you that it makes my blood boil when I see these lies. Because I understand the libertarian arguments for not funding, providing military funding to foreign countries that the U.S. should not be involved with. That is not us. And then I see the same. I see many of these people who hold it beside saying defund Israel, defund, you know, no more funding to Israel. But what they're really cheering and selling, celebrating is the killing of civilians. What they're basically saying is under the guise of America first or under the guise of protecting our interests, not wasting our tax, taxpayer dollars. They really want to strip Israel of its defenses so that from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. It doesn't really mean what you think it means. They're celebrating the killing of civilians. They want to kill them all. That's it. I don't think Israel just wants to kill all the Palestinians. You know how I know that? Because they can. And they take a surgical approach to how they deal with these things when they could flatten it. But this could be the end of Gaza. We could be looking at the end of Palestine. These attacks were so egregious. And all that is served by AOC's Democratic Socialists promoting this event, all that is served is that it destabilizes the region and could bring about the end of Gaza. It could put what's left of Palestine under total Israeli control. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? They're saying it's Israel's 9-11. Man, I'm sorry, guys. I wish I had better answers and better understanding of, of, of how to deal with these things. But I'm, I'm, I'm not a leader. I'm a person who complains on the internet. That's really it. I mean, I guess I'm a, a leader in some capacity. But I just don't know. I really don't. I can tell you that these people are evil. AOC, I think she's evil. Celebrating this stuff is evil. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.